she about meant to them. This is yeah. about the future, and that's about right. Yeah, that that is really, we did not. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. okay. Oh, easy. Um, I'm going to <clears throat> not good. Easy for us. That's probably not appropriate, uh, my way of thinking. Seven o'clock. At this time, I will call the June 19th, 2012 Planning Board meeting to order. <clears throat> First item on the agenda are minutes of June 12th. Mr. Secretary. I don't believe I received the minutes of new, so I haven't reviewed them yet. Okay. So we have to. Hold I don't off. remember re receiving them nope. either. So, Melanie, oh, the June twelfth minutes. I believe Oh, maybe I missed. All right, now let, let me. I can them. Let me disqualify that. Uh, our secretary is out uh, for a medical reason, and so uh, there's a good possibility that she did not receive them and then uh, forward them to us. So I will entertain a, a motion that we uh, table the minutes of June 12th. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is an approval not required. The applicant is Kathleen Murchis to combine lots 90 and 94 into one lot located at 15 Mayflower Street in Falmouth. Is there someone here to represent the applicant? <clears throat> Seeing none, um, I'll ask uh, Brian, are there any comments from the staff? Yeah, it's, a, it's a merger of two lots on Mira Vista, on Mira Vista so uh, by definition, not a subdivision and a title to your endorsement approval. Okay. Move it. Any, okay, mo motion? I moved it. I, I need a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is a public hearing um, on the wind energy systems, our dra the planning board draft for the zoning bylaw. Mr. Secretary, do you have a Notice for, we don't have it. You don't have to. Well, not, this is not the I'm sorry? You don't have to read the notice. It's, 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 a, it's a hearing. This is not going to the warrant. So there's, no, there's no notice. To not yet. Okay. okay. Not yet. Oh, okay. We have time. Hmm. That's it. That's, all right. Hmm. Um, okay. Uh, I know it was publicized in the papers and uh, and on, on the internet, on our website. Uh, before we get started, I would like to remind the audience, and thank you all for coming, by the way, um, that this, uh, this hearing is um, to get input from the public. And uh, so uh, <clears throat> we are interested in what you have to say in reference to the draft that we have and there are copies up here if you haven't seen it or haven't downloaded it from home. Um, we're interested in your input for the uh, this first portion of our draft bylaw. Um, this is not the complete um, bylaw. This is the beginning. This is like the first maybe one half to one third of it. But what we would like you to do is to limit your comments on this particular portion of the bylaw. Uh, so if you if you need a minute to uh, to read it or haven't read it before, then I'd appreciate it if you did before you <clears throat> before you speak. When you do speak, would you please come to the podium, identify yourselves, and speak into the microphone? You are being um, televised, and uh, we have also been advised that. Uh, the, uh, there may be someone from the public here to um, to uh, tape the re tape this proceedings. I believe the gentleman in the back is there. Uh -huh. John Carlson Foss. Okay, thank you. Um, and so you need to be advised that you are being um, a video. Is that a sound also, Mr. Foss? Sound also. So, so okay, and you be advised that that, uh, that that you are being 
televised by uh, the town uh, FCTV and also Mr. Foss. Um, I would like to remind the planning board that we are uh, here to listen and, uh, and we can ask for clarification of comments that are made by the, <coughs> by the person uh, speaking to us, but we are not here to debate issues. And it's, a, it's also necessary for you to remember that this wind energy system bylaw applies to future installation of wind turbines, in which wind energy systems in Falmouth, and is not relevant to the, um, uh, the wind turbines that are currently installed in town. Uh, lastly, um, <clears throat> I believe I can speak for the board by saying that our, our, the board's position currently is that the state's development of uh, wind turbine um, um, uh, regulations is, is, a, is a work in progress. Uh, they haven't finalized anything. Um, the Cape Cod Commission seems to have put their, their position on hold. And that uh, there are many towns uh, in, the, in the Commonwealth and several on the Cape that have gone ahead and developed their own bylaws concerning wind turbine uh, wind turbines and wind energy systems. And we are of the belief that we want to go ahead. We don't want to wait. I can remind you that we asked the town for a moratorium on the construction of new wind turbines a year and a half ago, a, a little over a, a year ago, and then uh, asked for an extension on that moratorium this last town meeting so that, so that uh, the planning board would have sufficient time to develop this bylaw to debate it, to get public input, and then present it to the fall town meeting uh, of 20, 2012, which would be this, this coming fall. So that is our goal. Um, <clears throat> I believe I've covered an introduction that uh, should lead into uh, comments from the public. So at this time, uh, I would invite members of the public to uh, address the planning board with uh, any um, concerns or issues or uh, thoughts that you might have on the proposal that's uh, available here for you or it was online also. So if you would like to address us, please raise your hand and I will acknowledge and recognize you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, my name is John Ford. I live at 372 Blacksmith Shop Road. And uh, I want to, first of all, commend you all for the amount of work you've done up to this point. And I've caught most of it on FCTV, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm more than impressed with the, uh, uh, the amount of work that you've done. Uh, you haven't left too many stones unturned, but I found a few pebbles that you uh, you were remiss in. Uh, there is no uh, municipal language in, in the bylaw that's proposed as is. And uh, we're all familiar with the uh, fiasco with uh, Wind One. And it was a question of municipal use there. Uh, and I'd like to see if that could be some, somewhat defined in, in your uh, formulation of this bylaw. Okay. And um, also, uh, I, um, the, the limit, uh, you have the 200 kilowatt limit. And um, I'm wondering if you could give some more thought to that. Um, we have, there are 100 kilowatt units that are disturbing people. Uh, even though these people are further than four times the height that the Cape Cod Commission has um, has proposed. Um, I would like to see no 200 kilowatt and no 100 kilowatt in uh, residences, uh, single residences in double A agricultural zone. Um, I, I happen to live in a residential 
double A agricultural zone. And to have one of those, if it's a 200 kilowatt, it would be about 550 feet away from me, or a 100 kilowatt, which would be 400 and change away from me. <coughs> that, that terrifies me. And I think that would be very unfair to any resident uh, of Falmouth. And uh, I don't know of other zones uh, that residences have that, that much area. Uh, so they're pro probably not impacted. But uh, those of us in that, in that zoning would, would, would be impacted. And um, one other point, um, public outreach area, that doesn't mean setback, does it? No, that, that means how far we will solicit input by notification. For the permitting? By, for, for the permitting, yes. Well, then, in that case, um, I don't see any setback um, requirements for any size turbine that you have proposed. That's correct. That, that's, that, that will be after tonight. That will be subsequent to this portion of the bylaw. It will? Okay. Yes. And will the public have a, a further chance? Absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, those are my, my brief comments, but uh, they mean a lot to me. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ford. 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 Right. Uh, the next speaker, please. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for letting us have this opportunity. My name is Steve Layton. I'm in Precinct 1. And I have absolutely no complaints about any of the physical restrictions that you might have thought of, uh, <coughs> such as height or uh, sound or flicker pollution and so on. But my comment is really a question. Can someone explain to me the rationale behind why you care what is done with the power? The 51% uh, has to be used on site. Uh, for instance, as just a thought experiment, suppose <coughs> you had a, someone installed in the future under these rules a wind turbine of a certain allowable size, and it, it met all the requirements and none of the neighbors complained. And then some efficiency improvement came along that enabled that same turbine to put out 50% more power. How would that possibly be hurting it? You've already, by definition, agreed that every visible and acoustically monitorable property was acceptable. And now you're simply getting more power out of it. <laughs> An acceptable answer to that would not be that we're already close to the theoretical maximum. That would be missing the point. Uh, so if any of you could answer that, I'd like to. Sure. Would someone else, someone would else on the board like to? Jim? I'd like to try to try it. We are anticipating this as an evolving technology and that there will be improvements. And what we're making our bylaw based on right now is what the existing conditions we have now and as we move forward, we're anticipating that there would be changes and we'd come back for revisions. And hopefully we will be looking at sound, setback, and every other thing we think is important and adjust it for that. Right now, we don't think there is, but hopefully there will be some bit, really big changes and there'll be some really quiet turbines that don't make noise and, or, and bother anybody, or don't have flicker, and maybe we can solve all those problems and we make an adjustment at that time. Mr. Chair, I can speak to oh, that uh, point. Just, just, just a moment. Yeah. yeah. All right. Rich. I can speak to his point. All right. Go ahead. Yes, sir. The, the reason is, is because we are not zoning for uh, an industrial use. We are not zoning for uh, an energy production use. We are <coughs> zoning strictly for an accessory use. And when you think about in that, that term, 51% is, you know, allowing 49% to be sold is the most we can do and still be credibly accessory. That, that's the reason. It's, it's a zoning issue that we are dealing with, and we are not in, in about to create a situation where people can come in and build private wind-generating plants. That's not what, what, what this is about. And that would 
at this stage of the technology create a lot more problems than we have right now where we're to do that. So that, that's, that's basically it. it it's, it's an accessory use, and, but therefore by definition the amount of energy produced uh, and an accessory use cannot exceed the amount that's used on site. I hope that answers your question. And we're getting real close to debating, and uh, I'd, I'd like to stay away from that. Um, and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not adverse to your asking a question. Maybe we, in the future, we could answer that at a at one of our regular meetings where we um, are discussing issues such as that. But that's that's a very good question. Uh, someone else? Yes, yes, sir. <coughs> My name is George Hampson. I'm from Precinct 5. And the reason why I'm here tonight is to learn about this before we get to town meeting. And I know that's a long way from now, but I think it's a very important issue. One uh, question I'd like to ask, you might not be able to answer it right now, is that for, for most of us people who are novice at this, uh, for, for wind turbines in general, I would like to know where uh, a 200 kilowatt turbine might be running in, in, in our general area, whether it might be in uh, Cape Cod or off Cape, but something that uh, town meeting members or people who are curious could go visit. I think it's a very important issue because most of us have no idea what the difference is in 200 kilowatt and a 100 kilowatt. Yeah, okay. okay? So uh, I think that's a very important issue because Mr. Ford spoke, spoke to this and uh, I was listening <coughs> to him and I, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to find out what we're into. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Brian, are you aware of any 200 kilowatt turbines in, in our <coughs> geographical area? Woods Hole Research is 100. So Woods Hole Research Center is 100. It's a good comment. They want to like some comparative examples uh, before we get to town meeting. We will certainly have them. Right. Um, just a moment, please. Um, yes, ma'am. <coughs> I'm Mary Zawoski, um, 53 Ransom Road, so Precinct 1. And um, Would you spell your last name, please? Z-A-W-O-Y-S-K-Y. Z A W O Y S K I. Thank you. Y. Y at the end. S K Y. Yeah. Thank you. So ideally, of course, I'd like to see the turbines not continue until we can figure out what all the problems are with them. Because I live 900 feet from the Woods Hole Research Center turbine, which is 100 kilowatt, and um, because every, there's so much suffering, and I feel like we're like the canaries in the coal mine here, trying to figure out. Why are these things bothering us the way they are? And I know I myself would not be included in this public outreach area. And I think this public outreach area is not big enough because I would not have had an opportunity to learn about these things. I certainly never expected the problems that I'm experiencing. The other comment that I had is that there are many people at the CBI meeting tonight at Gus Canty, and they wondered if they could present any uh, written comments to you. Absolutely. We can receive okay. written comments. Okay. We'll pass that on. Thank you. Yes. And uh, I might uh, add at this point that we, we've already received one written comment this evening, um, and it will be available in our office. It's from uh, attorney uh, Bob Ament. And uh, he submitted it to the planning board, and uh, the planning board has not had a chance to read it yet because it was just given to us tonight. But it is available; it will be available in our office if you choose to read that. And the and it is available for the planning board also. Uh, yes, sir. John Carlton Foss from 80 Church Street, and I see that Ron Zweig is here. Uh, his wind turbine is one of an example, uh, or an example of one of uh, what I think is a successful implementation. He is a neighbor of ours, and we are familiar with many other neighbors. Uh, there was one neighbor who, uh, for a, a period of a few months, 
had uh, concerns that she was hearing the turbine and uh, was bothered by it. Um, but and, and I, uh, my wife and I talked with her ex uh, quite deeply about it. Um, and at one point, she had me convinced that in fact she was hearing the turbine. Uh, my um, so. Uh, then she realized a, a few weeks later that she definitely did not hear the turbine. And she personally decided she wanted to have a turbine in her backyard, too. So um, I, I could make many other comments about um, uh, Ron's turbine, but I want to encourage him to speak about it. I think it's important to uh, pay attention to uh, successful implementations, and I think this is one. It's idiosyncratic in relation to the draft that you put together because it's more than 0.51 uh, of, of the power that he, use, uh, he actually uses in his household. Uh, so that brings into, well, is it accessory use or you, maybe there would be a way for a person who had that size turbine, which is quite quiet, um, to uh, apply under non-accessory use. I don't know how it will play out in terms of your standard and the practice of, of how difficult it will be to uh, get that kind of uh, turbine in place. I know of another turbine which is, I think, on the order of three to five kilowatts, which is quite noisy. It was poorly installed, uh, fortunately for the owners. There aren't uh, nearby neighbors. So uh, as far as I know, there haven't been complaints. But uh, it's, it's a, it can be a little bit tricky in, in these matters. And I hope you will, to a certain extent, reason from the, the base of <coughs> successful Im implementations. And that would, I believe, be the case in Ron Zweig's implementation. All right. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, speaker, yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Dave Moriarty, Precinct 6. I, I just have a, a question for the board. Uh, we've already had many complaints about a 100 kilowatt turbine. Why did we increase it another 100 when there's so much debate about the 100 kilowatt that hasn't seemed to have been satisfied the neighbors? Why do we go up to 200 when we haven't even straightened the 100 yet? Out. Correct. Okay. So your your question is uh, why did we why, why 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 did was yeah, it what's increased? The okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Chair, sure, I can address that question. I, I, I'm not going to address that just just yet, Rich. Well, you have a question. I can address it. Basically, 200 kilowatt is too big, is what you're saying. Well, I'm just wondering why the board went okay. up to 200. Okay. When they can't even satisfy a 100, why would you even go up to 200? It doesn't make any sense. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Ron Swag, Precinct 1. <coughs> um, Thanks very much for this opportunity to comment on the, the draft as far as you've taken it so far. And I and also would like to endorse the work you've done. I know you've been going through a huge volume of documents and, and uh, a tremendous amount of work to get to this point. Um, uh, one thing I'd just like to say uh, to, about what John Carlton Voss said, our turbine actually doesn't generate more than, than your specifications. But we do generate more energy than we use, and we donate that to charities in town. So it's another way of uh, sharing the, the benefit from, <coughs> the, from the turbine. Um, one thing I, I'm just uh, unclear about um, uh, in looking at this and looking at the, the different levels that you've established, um, one is that it's unclear to me how you, uh, which I think you can perhaps, to some extent you've, you've, you've expressed an opinion this evening, but how these different levels were established. And um, in terms of the kilowatt capacity of, of the turbines for, for smaller ones and larger ones, it seems to me that the, another way to look at this, and this may be part of the process you're going through, there, there are two dimensions to this uh, that I'd suggest you may wish to explore. 
Uh, one is that um, I think it's more the, the, the specifications, the technical dimensions that might, might be looked at. Sound is clearly one. There may be a sound limit. If we look at the old bylaws, some of these things are here. In terms of setting these, I mean, a 50 kilowatt machine or a 60 could be, could be um, uh, noisier than, than you may imagine. I mean, it may be for a household. I mean, what I'm trying, all I'm saying is that if there's a limit, as in the old bylaw, which was 40 decibels, which is far lower than what you're hearing from me now. It's about uh, two-thirds of what you're hearing from me now level. But, um, but that is uh, one thing. Another dimension is the setbacks, of course, and the height of the, of, of the tower, which has to do with setbacks and, uh, and those types of things. So I think that if you look at the technical aspects first and then, and then say, okay, we only want so much sound emitted from a property at a certain level, at a property line, that would be the specification, and then the turbine would need to meet that. And that would be a way of looking at whatever the, whatever the size is. Because as you mentioned, technology will be changing, it'll be getting better, and that that would be more of, a, more of an important factor to look at. Flicker is another factor, clearly, to look at in terms of, of, of how that might affect households in terms of the location. Um, on the Met Tower uh, requirement, um, you may wish to, to, to think about that a little bit for these smaller s installations. Uh, that can be a very expensive uh, uh, part of, of it, and it takes, it takes a while, but, and yet we do have pretty good data, particularly in Falmouth, over winds and this type of thing. So we have an idea across town from various uh, uh, sensors that, that, that are here. Um, and again, uh, I think I'd just like also to come to the, to the, you know the point that was raised and, and just to look at another uh, way of viewing this and that is in terms of the usage of the power on site and, and to what extent and we do use more than 51 percent so on, on our site so it's not of what we're generating but I'm looking at it more from a finance standpoint I mean, if you look at the investment that's required to put up a wind turbine and if the wind turbine meets all the technical specifications then there might be a way, you know, that's just one thing to explore. If you were to look at what it costs to set up a small turbine, 10 kilowatt, 5, whatever it may be, and then you look at that in terms of the, um, the, the energy that would need to be produced to justify the investment. I mean, what you're saying about wind then, I think would have to be translated to PV, to solar electric power because it would be the same kind of thing, right? I mean, if, if someone generated 60% uh, uh, of, you know, that, that went to the grid, it would be, you couldn't put up that much PV. And then we'd be kind of curtailing renewable energy development in town because it would be beyond that capacity. And some businesses may also look at this as a way, if they're gonna make an investment, to think of it as a, um, as a way of generating some revenue, maybe, you know, is a business side of things, but it has to meet the specifications, sound, flicker, all these other factors, setbacks, other safety aspects that go with it. So I think that if you look at that side of it, and then from that you can kind of come back to setting uh, scale or whatever, however it might go, if you can do it that way, or you just set the parameters that must be met to satisfy the town and that it isn't that it's set up in this in the same fashion. If there's a, a reason for these, it wasn't clear to me from reading this exactly how these were set. Okay, basically, there might be something more to it underlying here. But I would tend to, to look at it more from the technical, financial, and, uh, and to be sure that everyone is, is, is you know, and that there's also an important dimension that we, uh, when we put our turbine up was that we had neighborhood meetings before we even did anything. We started with the neighbors and started talking with them first. And there can be, that dimension can be added as a consultation process that brings people in, they can raise their concerns, they can look at it, they can discuss things, and this would be part of, a, of a, an approval process. So it isn't something, some, if, if your board is the, uh, the uh, permitting a entity or, or whichever board in town is, uh, that, uh, that, that it would be community would be behind it. So I, th those are my main comments. So you might want to look at it from a little different viewpoint than starting with these different levels. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can I ask you a question? 
Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, yeah. We have a question for you, Mr. Dwight. Oh, sorry. Would you? Would you? We had a clarification sorry. question. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Did you yes. say the size of your turbine is 100 megawatts? Uh, no, 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 ten. It's ten kilowatts. Ten kilowatts. Yeah. Do you see seasonal variation in your turbine? In terms of the production? Oh yeah. It's a um, the summer is great for solar. The winter is great for wind. So, uh, so that's the way it works. And if you look at it, it's sort of a bell curve. You know, starting from August, it's relatively low July, August, and then it starts, starts peaking toward December, January, you know, when we have the strong northwest winds coming through, and then it comes right back down again. So we have a very quiet, relatively qu quiet in terms of energy production summer season. So it's not, uh, it's, and that's basically it. It's, it looks like almost a perfect bell curve, if you were, can, can imagine. You said so. you more than 51% on site. Yes. Over the season, also. Well, it's 51 cents. Well, when we talk, I assume you mean per year, on a yearly basis. On a yearly basis. On a yearly <laughs> basis. On a monthly basis, it's going to vary because the the wind is different. From, from. So in the summer, we actually may be buying power, um, and in the winter, we're 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 donating power. So it uh, works that way. Thank you. So, okay. I have a question. Yeah. Would, would it be uh, all right if we approached you to visit your turbine? Yeah, of course. Thank sure. you. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Levi Adams, and I'm from Precinct 3. Um, at first, I have a question <coughs> regarding whether or not the charge to the planning board um, that you're restricted with regards to uh, defining the bylaw on the basis of accessory use, or did you add that yourself? Uh, it, did something come down from wherever <laughs> that says accessory use is the context in which you need to build these bylaws, or you built the bylaws? Because I believe uh, that the framing of this bylaw. Um, is really a kind of, there are a lot of good things in it, but it's really negative. I believe it's negative uh, with regards to where we are, where the town thought it was when it started doing wind turbines. Uh, I believe that it it's, uh, connotes a kind of negative view. And if, the fr if it's framed, if everything has to be on the basis of accessory use, then you, you're already starting a little bit behind, uh, in my view, uh, the, it's a hostile environment, I would say, that that creates a hostile environment because it limits everyone uh, in, in many ways. And I, I, I appreciate that there are very many turbines <coughs> of very, various size, uh, but we are in a, I think the town committed itself some time ago, now maybe that's going to change. Uh, to being a wind-friendly place. Um, and that's the question from a policy standpoint. Are we going to be a wind-friendly town or are we not going to be a wind-friendly town? If we are, then it seems to me that we need to, I'd be very cautious about starting any um, bylaw with the prohibitions. Uh, it seems to me that's not friendly to start the bylaw with the prohibitions. Uh, you can rewrite that in a very different kind of way. I have some general concerns uh, that we want to make sure that the kinds of places uh, that they're that we are friendly um, in, in a number of ways. Uh, I don't know, for instance, if this provision here for what what's called public use a light industrial zoning district. What. I'm not sure that the Falmouth Hospital would be either of those public use. I suppose it's public use, but not by the public entity, not a governmental entity. One would be concerned at some, at some point that these kinds of entities, whether we're talking about the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institutions, and there are many there, or the Falmouth Hospital or Falmouth Academy, would look at its energy needs somewhere down the line and see a need, and we want to be sure that these bylaws fit those kinds of institution. If you're persuaded that it does, uh, good, I, I, I'm all in favor of that. But I, as I read the bylaw, 
I had some concern about those kinds of things. I also think when we're trying to promote from the states, uh, statewide uh, energy, the development of energy business, we don't want to be onlookers in the town of Falmouth when energy-related business start to develop. Um, I don't know how many turbines they will need, but I think that you're creating um, an environment that says we are in energy fr um, friendly or not, in, uh, alternative energy, and we need to be mindful of that because the state is making a very significant investment in bringing alternative energy development businesses into the state and helping them to develop. I don't know if we want to be onlookers. Uh, we, we don't want, as a citizen here, to be unduly distracted, uh, but at the same time we need, as you are doing, to set the standards which we can live with. Uh, I'm pro-wind, as you probably detect, uh, because I think that in the future, our town and its investments and the kind of thing, energy needs that we have are going to be so great that we need to be able to take advantage of all kinds of uh, energy resources. Uh, I, another concern is whether or not the zoning of other kinds of places. I could envision building, having been participated as, as you know, Ralph, in building a um, uh, complex of houses, affordable housing we did in the in the town of Chatham a couple of years ago, um, that one could build a, in it, build a turbine that served the 14 units in that. There are separate houses for that. How does that fit with this? As I read this, I said, well, if I did that in Falmouth, if I found some great plot of land and built 14 houses for affordable housing use, could I build a wind turbine to provide the energy for those 14 units. I don't know, but I think that it's something for you to think about uh, that along with things like the, uh, uh, one could imagine a condo association wanting a single turbine for the whole condo association. Uh, and I don't know whether these bylaws address those kinds of questions. I would hope that um, my comment is try to make the bylaw friendly uh, and be very mindful of the language and not be so negative at the very beginning of what the, the pro prohibitions are on top. We Regulations tend to be like that, you know. We tell people what they can't do before we tell them what they can do. Uh, and I'm, I'm very concerned uh, that this hardworking planning board uh, has it falls into the trap of being negative like uh, other organizations that, that we have. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Other comments from the public? <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, sorry, Ron Swike again. Precinct okay, finally. Um, I'd like to follow on that, those comments. Basically, under the Green Communities Act, 10 houses could get together put a turbine somewhere, basically. It doesn't have to be even right in the neighborhood. It could be someplace else in the vicinity that would then be their, their investment. Ten or more houses, basically, could be done. And that would support what th that comment. And also, I'm also the town representative on the Cape Light Compact. And, uh, the, and all of you who haven't taken advantage uh, uh, of the Cape Light Compact's audit process and the uh, other, other energy cons conserving uh, uh, d dimensions to its uh, energy uh, efficiency program, I suggest you do. We've, it's the, uh, the funds are available to do that and they, they, we are actually all paying for it through our electric bills. So it's something to do. And in that then, it comes to the point of saying, well, if someone sets up a house and they're using 51% uh, of the power, the way the house is, is set up and it's operating. And then suddenly we bring in a program like Cape Light Compact and they end up reducing that need, that usage. Suddenly <coughs> they're now producing 60% more power than they're using. So it's a disincentive to energy conservation to a household if they have to stay within that 51% dimension. So that's something else to factor in because things are going to be changing, appliances change, things change, it's getting better all the time. 
So this is another, it's, it, this is, it gets complicated, but when you start setting these kinds of things, it's, it's not that easy to, uh, to factor in the future and to look at existing programs. Thank you, sir. Sure, thank you. Additional comments from the public? Yes, sir. This is construed as a debate. I was inspired by something that Ron said, uh, Steve Layton again, Precinct 1. I think <clears throat> you want to pay attention to the incentives that you're setting. And I don't see any incentive here for efficiency. And in fact, uh, a somewhat whimsical note, you recall the old trick of putting a playing card in your bicycle spokes. That is well under one lot and uh, it makes a lot of noise. And, uh, you could imagine someone who wanted to thumb their nose at these regulations, putting up one of the very smallest turbines and making it very noisy. Okay, thank you. Additional comments from the public? Hearing none, um, uh, I think I will close the, I will close the hearing and, uh, well, we'll wrap we we'll take under advisement for uh, for written comments. Should we, we can want to take try to answer that previous question. I'm sorry. Did we want to try to answer that previous question about the disincentives? No, the 200. Uh, why we increased the size? Oh, um, would you like to address that? No. Well, <coughs> I just go ahead. I think uh, I threw that out there just because we want to uh, keep all options open. I don't want to be too prohibitive or restrictive. We don't know if there's a place where we can fit a 200 watt, but we'd like to give it a try. If there is, we don't want to just rule it out arbitrarily. Yeah, Rich. Just to add to that, we are going to be developing performance standards, and that's how we will address those issues is when we apply it in the permitting process, applying the performance standards. So why tie our hands to uh, any smaller than we need to? Yeah. Yes. That's the logic. Um, Sorry. Are yes. you putting any Paul. deadline on the comments, written comments? We use no, no, no. We won't no. put a deadline on the comments. So if you have uh, additional comments you'd like to submit in writing, or you know people who would like to, you can do that and do so and uh, have them sent to the uh, planning office. Are Bob, you, are you going to include the written comments we have received in this hearing before we close it, or is uh, I can't. I can't read them all. I've just, I, I noticed. Oh, I noticed that we staff. did have one. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's it's it's. This is not many. This is just one. Oh. This is just one written okay. comment. Um, there's a lot of information and, and okay. attachments and so forth okay. to that. So that's that's just that by itself. Um, any other comments from the board? Yes, Paul. Just an unrelated comment. I attended the uh, wind turbine advisory group before coming here this evening, and the affected neighbors were participating at the table, and I thought that was very good news. Oh, okay. Thank you. And just for the, for the board's knowledge and public knowledge, we did receive a letter uh, via email that we have for you from uh, Notice Clean Energy LLC with, with the uh, other commenters. Okay. For your information. All right. Rich? Not tonight, but I would suggest the next meeting when we do have a discussion, we be ready to discuss some of the comments that we've heard tonight. That, that's, I believe that's our intent, and that will be next week. I think the not? public should know that. that, that that's yeah. the plan. Yeah, that will, will be compile next week. these comments, right. and then we'll bring to the board, and we'll have a little expanded dialogue for the public also. Then right. Answer some of the questions that came up. Right, for everyone's note, I, I will be absent from that meeting, and Pat will be conducting that meeting. Jim? Just in, in general, one of the, our charge is really not to be negative and to stop things, but to protect neighbors. <coughs> our, our job is to make sure that new developments in town and things are changed really protect the existing neighbors. So we're not really going out and trying to don't do this or don't do that. We're trying to protect what's there right now and the rights of the property owners and the noise that comes from. And that's really the place we're coming from, not to stop something, but to protect With balance, well, Jim. Right? Okay. With balance. With balance, right. Uh, any other comments from the board? Uh, in that case, then I will close the hearing. And we thank you for coming, ladies and gentlemen, and your comments. Um, the next item on the agenda is uh, correspondence. I see none in front of me, Brian. There's no correspondence. Um, then before, before, uh, before we close the meeting, then... Um, I would like everyone to uh, be advised that next that next uh, 
next Tuesday we will be discussing this this input and um, other um, other things that are relevant to the bylaw and Brian are there any other items on next week's agenda that we need to mention at this time? I, uh, maybe other things, but we'll try to make sure that this is the um, main topic. Focal point, okay. And we will have uh, an expanded bylaw that gets into some performance standards. Okay. Uh, Lastly, before we adjourn, I'd like everyone to know that uh, I visited Joyce in the hospital the other day, and she seemed to be doing very well but she was on her way to Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston for um, a, a possible procedure. Brian, did, do you have anything uh, update on that? Uh, I have no updates on that. Okay, so just uh, keep her in your thoughts and we'll look forward to having her back as soon as we can. Uh, in the meantime, Brian and Marlene are up there on their own sharing, oh, um, <laughs> sharing, <laughs> sharing the duties and so, uh, uh, when you stop in, you don't have to in say hi to Joyce right now. You can just walk in and announce yourself. Uh, anything else that anybody wants to bring up for a future meeting? If not, then I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed.